G'day guys, welcome to another episode of Invest with Tim Allen. I am your host, Tim Allen. I am your fully licensed buyer's agent and mortgage broker from Morton Bay Finance Broker. I'm actually company today with Ryan Way from Morton Bay Finance Broker. He's one of my colleagues. Ryan, can you tell my audience a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm Ryan. Uh, I've been always working for seven years now, and I've known Tim for four years, and we've struck up an excellent relationship, and we work well together, and we'd like to share some information and educate people out there about what we do. Fantastic. Ryan, you're a property investor like myself? Uh, yeah, I bought my first property in 2008, and at the moment, I don't think I have one investment in my own mind, but uh, fantastic. You do a crime law, so yeah. Today, what are we what are we talking about for the audience today, mate? Well, uh, I'll go with Hoppy sort of explain a few things about yep. banks look at an application, finance application in terms of your borrowing capacity, uh, how they look at types of income, uh, with your full time, part time, casual, uh, loan features on our, our, our home loan, so offset accounts, regional, fixed rates, that sort of thing, and buying an investment property, how do we potentially structure it? Fantastic. Well, it looks like there's going to be a few videos and quite a lot to unpack with that. So what we might do is we might start off with borrowing capacity as our first little topic that we'll sort of dive down and we'll have that discussion and everything like that so everyone can sort of get that understanding. Sure. Um, mate, borrowing capacity, I'm, I'm guessing the first important point is income. Yeah, correct. So there's two things that banks are really looking for when they, you apply for a home loan. They're looking at your equity position or how are you going to purchase the property? And then they're also looking at your ability to repay the loan. So that's a sort of a simplified way of growing this up. Excellent. The next thing went wrong. I'm an amazing artist. So the boats, if the banks will work on what we call the rule of the scale of equity, where you've got your purchase price on one side, your mobile now on the other. And the bank's levels of comfort is 80%. As you can see, I'm an amazing artist. Now, so once you go above 80%, we have what are called lenders mortgage insurers. Now, they take on the risk on behalf of the bank if the, uh, the LVR, the loan to value ratio, is over 80%. So if we were to lodge an application to a bank where the LVR was 90%, if the bank is happy with it, but the mortgage insurance provider is not, then the deal is dead. They won't do it because the the LMI provider takes on the bank, uh, takes on the risk, and they have to be comfortable with it. So, in the event you can't pay your loan, the bank repossesses the house, they sell it, and if there's any losses, they go off. Uh, the, the LMI provider pays them out, and then they will come after you to recoup their losses. But that's the way that works. Now, the government at the moment also has their first home guarantee scheme, which basically takes the place of an LMI provider. So there's eligibility or criteria for that and you need to meet those, but on the off chance that you do, and there's there's lots of ways you can, it's not very, very difficult to get into, but there's limited spots each, each financial year. So that's where a broker can help you determine if you are eligible and sort of work through the figures and things like that. We you know, get through that process. So if you've got that, and then coming back to borrowing capacity, what you need in order to satisfy the banks is income. To sell the light. So that's made up of your loan repayments. The loan repayments, say for example, we're applying for a home loan with that interest rate of 5%. The banks build in uh, an automatic buffer of 3% until the property boom we had in the last couple of years, which is 2.5%, but the regulators just stipulated we needed a 3% buffer. So if you're paying 5%, the banks in their calculators are all built in, they'll be assessing the in repayments at 8% to make sure that, well, you can afford it today, can you afford it in the future and if rates go up? They go down, happy days. If they go up, they want to ensure that you're not going to lose your house. And of course, they're protected as well. Then you have your living expenses, which of course are individual for most people, but the banks rely on a system called the Household, household Expenditure Measure Scheme, where if you are a married couple with two children earning 120 grand between the two of you, they might say, well, we, your average living expenses are $3,500 a month. So, if you, if we go through your living expenses and we determine that you only spend two and a half thousand dollars a month, month the bank will use that baseline figure of three and a half anyway, and then they'll want evidence to show that you are actually only spending two and a half grand a month. Um, three and a half grand—that's the thing <laughs> most people are over. It's just the way life is, as we all know. Uh, you've got your bills, which of course, and then at the end of the day, we have surplus income. 
So once everything goes in, we call it all your income in, and we have to determine what is usable, what is uh, able to be used as accessible income. So there could be, you might earn $2,000 a fortnight, but then you have pre-tax uh, superannuation contribution or a salary tax for us to a car. There's lots of variables that are on pay slips, and that's why it's important that we see them to work out exactly what we can and can't use. We pull all your incomes in, any existing liabilities that you have. So if you have credit cards, the banks will put in 3.8% of the limit. So if you had a $10,000 limit, $380 a month, here's how many you borrowing passive. So the lower you have it, the better. And they don't care if it's nothing only, it's all about the limit when it comes to credit cards. So we're just going to do a quick little recap. I want to move the camera up because the camera, I don't think, can see your wonderful drawing. So once again, over this side of the board, from my understanding that this sort of runs through, we've got the purchase price and then the loan and the bank's comfort level with the equity is at 80%. And then they're willing to go higher with the lender's mortgage insurance, but we need to have the sign off from the lender's mortgage insurance company. So even if the bank says, yeah, we're happy with that, we're willing to do it, the LMI provider needs to um, be happy with the deal as well. If for one reason or another, the proverbial hits the fan, the bank has to take the house and they don't sell it for as much as what you originally paid for it for one reason or another, okay? And then the, the bank is protected from the lender's mortgage insurance provider. If they pay the bank for the loss that's there and then the lender's mortgage insurance provider comes and chase you, the borrower, for the different yeah. or that loss, okay? And then on the other side here, we've got income coming in. Then we've got any existing loan repayments up the top. We've got the living expenses. We've got the bills. And then we've got surplus income, which they work on what um, that money is there. And I'm guessing from what you've just done, if we get a tick in both box, then we, theoretically, we should get a tick from a bank, but we, would, we can't guarantee any loan we lodge until it's been picked up, assessed, and approved by a bank. So it can all look great. But we can't guarantee any loans that we submit until they've been actually approved. We can be confident. I lodge them unless I think they're going to go through. But if we've got money to put down or equity and property to put towards it and we've got enough income to service the loan, it all is good. In theory, it should go through. My, my personal little judgment that I have with the uh, discussion with the clients is unless I'm 8 and 5% confident that we're getting approval, my recommendation is not to launch. Do you have something similar? Yeah, exactly. Is that 80? What's your? I don't know the concrete figure. I came on with this on confident I would go through with all the shit. I um, like, talk to the clients about it. We either look for another lender or we probably inside wouldn't figure out a rental solution. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Invest with Tim Allen. Uh, I am Tim Allen, your fully licensed buyer's agent and mortgage broker with Wharton Bay Finance Broker. The buyer's agency that I run is IPS Buyer's Agent. If you need help on that side, reach out. And I'm Ryan from One Bay Finance Bear about If you need help with a home loan, get in touch. Thanks, guys. See you in the next one. Bye.